Hi, and thanks for joining me. Well, Christopher Boozy and the dreaded Saucy Squad have been written about by the UK newspapers over the last seven to 10 days. And this has caused much jubilation and joy all across social media, because finally a lot of people feel vindicated and feel like they've been heard. Now, why do they feel like they've been vindicated and hurt? Well, if you haven't been following this story, there have been very brave people that have been trying to draw mainstream media's attention to the activities of Christopher Boozy and the Sussex Squad and the Sugars and all the people that are the fan base of the Sussexes for many, many years. They were the original whistleblowers. They were the people that were trying to counter the narrative that the Sussexes have been spinning way before it was fashionable and way before it was safe to do so. So I'm excited to do this video to pay them suitable tribute. So glasses on, I've got all my facts written down and I'll try to stick to my script so that I don't go off onto too many tangents because this story is so big. It is large. You could easily do four or five videos and you know, you would have a lot of interesting things to say. So I'll just try to stick quite focused in this video. So these people were the victims of horrendous trolling and targeting by the Sussex Squad and Christopher Boozy, as I said, and they were deliberately hounded and bullied of various social media platforms. Now, the method used to achieve this aim was a thing called mass reporting, where a large group of people actually all sort of gather together and mass report an account or a channel. That causes the powers that be to look closely at that channel or account, and it can result in the account being restricted or suspended while it's being investigated. And in some cases, it can result in permanent suspension. Now, the sort of justification for this back in the day, it doesn't happen as much now because I think, you know, the powers that be on social media platforms have wised up that this was a method of harassment and bullying. But back in the day, you know, you would be tossed off and seemingly for no reason. You, and you couldn't get any explanation for why you were being suspended or tossed off. And the justification was that they were silencing hate speech, that somehow they would intimate that anyone that had a counter narrative to Harry and Meghan were actually pushing hate speech which of course is ridiculous because anyone can raise questions or delve into something or object to a narrative that is being spun without it being based on racism or anything horrible like that. But that is why a lot of people were frightened to speak out at the time. And it's actually interesting that Kenzie Schofield, this is just a side note that's not, I haven't written down, um, I saw in a documentary that there was a documentary done on Harry Poe's spare and what had happened to him. It was put out by Talk TV. So you could probably take it all with quite a grain of salt. However, she said an interesting thing that did make me prick up my ears. She said that until South Park came along, that a lot of the mainstream media, and I'm paraphrasing, were had this feeling of caution that everyone was careful about what they said. And no one really was confident enough to raise any objection to the prevailing Harry and Meghan narrative in case they were accused of racism, in case they were tainted with that horrible race brush. So she said there was caution and it wasn't until South Park where they saw that they were openly mocked and that the story that they were trying to spin was being questioned and invalidated and sort of, you know, raised more questions that there was a palpable sense of relief and that people felt, oh, well, maybe we can say what we really think now. So there was a feeling then that the gloves were off, that it was safer to say what you really wanted to say. But prior to South Park, prior to Family Guy, prior to the F and Grifters comment, which everyone delighted in, including myself, um, you know, it was not safe to speak your mind. You had to have courage to put your head above the parapet, as Princess Diana used to say. And so these are some of the people that did just that. 
So many YouTube accounts were, of course, targeted in that Harry and Meghan docuseries, as you know. And some of the channels that were mentioned, and I'm not just mentioned in the docuseries, but have been targeted and harassed since are The Royal Grift, According to Taz, Nate the Lawyer, Murky Meg, and there's many, many, many more. Now, I sort of chose those to highlight because they're all very different. And they're coming at this from completely different angles. Now, the first two I'm familiar with because I sometimes watch their videos. Now, Royal Grift is very evidence fact based. She does a lot of research and she brings a lot of facts and evidence to her audience, whereupon she expands upon it with her own personal opinion. And she ties it in with the political ecosystem in the USA, which a lot of UK and Australian viewers probably wouldn't understand as much, probably wouldn't get as much but um, obvious of great interest to her USA fans. But she's very clear when she is telling us her own opinion. She tells us implicitly, this is my opinion. Do your own research. You know, take advantage of the factual documents I am showing you, but do your own research from your own opinion. And she encourages people to counter her opinion in her comments down below. And there is a lot of vigorous discussion. So that's the royal grift, and that's the impression I have of her. Now, she also plays a really important part in highlighting the hypocrisy of Harry and Meghan doing stands against social media bullying and harassment, throwing their weight behind that in the Mental Health Week event where they were supposedly trying to support the distressed parents of children that had been severely damaged or even lost their life through harassment and bullying on social media. So they sort of jockeyed on the back of this issue, advocating for censorship and strict regulation of free speech on social media. So Royal Grift has been instrumental in highlighting the hypocrisy of that stance while all the harassment and targeting bullying has been going on behind the scenes via people that are supposedly in the Sussex camp, fans of the Sussexes, although a direct link between them hasn't been officially established as yet. A lot of hard evidence has been provided to mainstream media. A lot of dots are being connected. And I am aware of a fairly valid rumour that official investigations have been and will be continuing into said association. So we will see if any of that actually bears fruit and hopefully it will, but that's a video for another time. Then we have According to Taz. Now, According to Taz is a lighthearted, lovely, very witty, highly intelligent soul who has great production values with her videos, and they're very enjoyable to watch because she edits them brilliantly, and she pays attention to a lot of topics, and she actually reports on the whole royal family, not just Harry and Meghan. She has concentrated on Harry and Meghan when they are in the news, when they are topics of interest, when they are doing something unbelievably stupid or <laughs> carrying out some shenanigans that attract wry amusement from all, she will highlight it in a very entertaining and funny way. And plus, she also uh, talks about serious things when it matters. So highly entertaining, great channel. Now, she has been stalked and harassed and it continues to this day. So that is appalling and that is the truth. That's factual. That is what is happening. I'm not familiar with Nate the lawyer other than to know that he is a lawyer and he comes at this from a legal and informed angle that's uh, fact-based and researched and entertaining. And then there's Murky Meg, who is on the more controversial end of the spectrum. Um, I'm not overly familiar with her channel, but I know that she raises controversial subjects that everyone out there is talking about. She raises them, she investigates them, she delves, um, she's irreverent, she's witty, and she is a real sort of soothing uh, poultice to people's anger and to people's angst and to people being really upset 
of the attacks on the royal family and also before um, our late Majesty died. You know, she was instrumental in being a voice for those that weren't going to sit by silently and see an elderly woman be bullied or have her legacy sullied. So she plays her role as well. Now, aside from these large YouTube channels that are thriving and still going on and they're fine, there were littler channels. And one that gets mentioned to me a lot is Yankee Wally. And now I've had screenshots of evidence of a coordinated campaign targeting and harassing Yankee Wally. Now, I can't verify these screenshots, but I have no reason to accept that they wouldn't be valid or real. And I know that these same screenshots and evidence have been passed on to people that can actually do something about it. So hopefully justice one day will be served. Now, Yankee Wally was hounded off YouTube and she was hounded off X, I believe. And like I said, she predates me. So I was never familiar with her content. I never got to see what she had to say. I never got to see why she was causing so much <laughs> trouble um, and why she was hounded off the, pro, you know, the, the actual platform. But a lot of people mention her and a lot of people sort of point to her as the main uh, evidence of harassment and targeting, bullying, and also the closing down of free speech. They mentioned Yankee Wally in the same breath. Now, there's another YouTuber, Avid Gardner, that went out of her way to stand up for Yankee Wally. Now, again, I say this took a lot of courage because this is before it was fashionable, before it was safe to do so. And she wasn't doing anything wrong other than standing up for someone that she perceived was being bullied. And she stood up for her in a really courageous way. And she called out Christopher Boozy way before anybody else was. And um, she's won a lot of respect and admiration for that because she's incredibly loyal. And um, so I wanted to mention that because there's other, there's the big channels getting targeted and harassed, but there's also smaller channels that have to bravely stand up and cop what they cop through standing up for what they believe is right. So the campaign of hate and conspiracy against Catherine, the Princess of Wales, really drew attention to the Sussex Squad and Christopher Boozy. They were some of the most strident voices taking part in the Where's Kate campaign. And this was picked up by a lot of the Sussex friendly media stable. Uh, I made a video about one such friendly Sussex stable called Penske Media Corporation. In that video, I didn't allege that they were doing anything wrong. I was just observing the fact that they are a Sussex friendly media stable. And it was interesting to me that someone on X shared a screenshot from an article that was done on Christopher Boozy that was published in Rolling Stone magazine. And I was amused to see that Rolling Stone is one of the Penske Media Corporation's stable. Now, could just be a coincidence, but there seems to be a lot coming out from Penske Media Corporation that, as I said, is very Megan friendly. And in particular, through the barrage, the pile on, on Catherine, the Princess of Wales, they were churning out via their digital magazines, sometimes 10 to 15 articles a day, boom, 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 really sort of cashing in and harnessing the Where's Kate conspiracy, the Photoshop conspiracies. And then near the end of the pile on, they started pumping out uh, Megan friendly articles touting her new business. Uh, what is it? Oh, I can never remember. I can't remember. Americana Riviera Orchard. Oh, gosh, that's such a bad name. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. She obviously didn't take advice on that one. Okay, so then I decided to visit some Sussex Squad pods because Christopher Boozy invited me to. He published a link on his ex account and anyone could click on the link and listen in on these Sussex Squad meetings. They're completely transparent. I got the feeling that he wanted people to click in and listen in because he appeared at the sort of front end of a few of these meetings and he presented himself as a very statesmanlike figure who was very measured and very controlled and, you know, just acting out of the goodness of his heart and I got the feeling that he was performing for somebody. I, I really got the feeling that he probably was thinking that Harry and Meghan were tuning in because he was like he was auditioning <laughs> because it was quite unbelievable. Nothing like he is on his ex-account. 
Anyway, he left the meeting about halfway through, whereupon the Sussex squad got real. That's when they got to what they're really like. And they presented this almost bizarro world of alternative fact. You know, they turned facts upside down and inside out. And the sad thing is, they truly believe what they're saying. And one of the most bizarre things they really seem to believe is the fact that the UK media and by extension the UK people, the public and the royal family are calling, begging for Harry and Meghan to return. Well, they're not. They're not. I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. No one wants them to return. Everybody feels this dull ache in their stomach when they hear Harry's on his way. Like it's just, oh no, we're going to get reconciliation articles and olive branch articles and a barrage of PR for Melodrama Cito, you know, touting reconciliation with the royal family and how much they need him and how they want him back in the fold. And they don't. It's all PR puff coming from the USA. None of it is coming from any public feeling in the UK. Also, the royal family has made it very clear by updating their website, they do not want them back. They have specifically stated they are finished, they are gone, they will never be doing any official royal duties again. They are not representing the monarchy any further. They are not representing the king in any shape or form. They have nothing, nada, nilch, to do with the royal family. But this Sussex squad, group believe they are wanted back and then they say oh you shouldn't have been so nasty to them then you wouldn't have lost them it was a relief when they went <laughs> and it's more of a relief now because now they are just a couple that is embarrassing so no one wants them back trust me no one wants them back the other thing they touted on this sort of second hour of this meeting was a lot of conspiracy theories that are quite astonishing. They really believe that Princess uh, Catherine is being held in a tower or in a castle or in some location against her will um, or in a coma or injured or isn't the real Catherine or oh, Prince William is actually this violent, domestic violence abuser. And the way they validate these claims and the way they believe them themselves is they point to Prince Harry's book, Spare. I'm not kidding. They quote Harry a lot. They quote Harry in his memoir. They quote Harry in his docuseries. They quote Harry in his numerous whingy little interviews. They quote Harry as a reliable source. Now that I know you will find hilarious, as I did, but they do. They almost quote from Spare like it's the Bible, and I'm not being blasphemous there because they seem to give it that much validity and credence because it is fueling their whole campaign. It is fueling everything they believe. They take everything that the Sussexes have spun them in order to make money, snake oil salesmen that have spun what they need to spin to make money, to grift off their association with the royal family, they believe every word without question. They point to Harry saying about Prince William having a red mist that descended on him as justification for the conspiracy theories about him supposedly injuring, harming or doing away with Catherine. And then they bring up the dog bowl. Well, there's evidence. I'm sure they would present that in a court of law as evidence, circumstantial evidence for Catherine's disappearance, the red mist and the dog bowl story. So it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. And the other hoot thing is I heard that there were supposedly 300 people at a Sussex squad meeting on Christopher Boozy's platform, Spratable. Well, the one I attended, I couldn't, I didn't sign into the meeting. I just listened to the recording. But I don't think there was a lot of people there because there was only about 10 voices that spoke once or twice. So, you know, and there was a long wait waiting for people to come in and join the call or the pod, whatever they call them. And um, yes, yes, I, I don't think that they quite have the cachet 
or the power that they once had. So we've paid tribute now to the original whistleblowers, okay, and when it wasn't safe to do so, people that spoke out bravely. Now let's examine the accusations made against Boozy and the Sussex Squad via recent articles published in the public domain by UK newspapers. And they even go a little further than what I've said at the top of this video. So The Sun revealed some of the sinister tactics the trolls use against those that speak out against them. So like I said earlier, reports of doxing, having private details leaked and their family and friends being hounded. Smear campaigns, such as accusing one woman of being complicit in the death of a family member and receiving emails with her address listed and a photo of her house on Google Maps. So it sounds awfully like unlawful intimidation, doesn't it? So maybe Harry and Meghan should distance themselves, should disassociate themselves, because this definitely sounds like unlawful intimidation. And so maybe they could speak out about it in their next cyber security, cyber safety media moment. Now people will say, well, there's heaps of trolling accounts on social media targeting Harry and Meghan, so what's the difference? Well, the difference is that dots are being connected, that this has an appearance of coordination. This has an appearance of professionalism and of a campaign-like rollout. So the efficient use of collective power to silence, to destroy free speech, and to advocate for policy and law changes that would affect free speech. You know, we're getting into the realms really without being exaggerating or being a conspiracy theorist. You can see how this could lead to a life that is led in Russia or North Korea or China, where social media is no longer free, everything is monitored, and you can't publish any personal opinion. Now, this effective use of collective power has also been used professionally in order to push out Omen Scobie's Endgame book. And this was actually reported on by the Daily Mail's Matt Strudwick in November 2023. He said that many Sussex Squad influencers and bloggers were made to sign NDAs and he gave them access to his book ahead of its official release. Now, that is a collective power, a collective network used for promotion. And um, yeah, so that would seem to be a professional application of the Sussex Squad and Christopher Boozy and all that. So the Daily Mail's Tom Leonard pointed out that Christopher Boozy is on the lookout for toxic trolls. He should look in the mirror. That was a direct quote. And he pointed out in detail Boozy's online harassment of the Princess of Wales. He accused her of lying about her Mother's Day image. He endlessly comments on her weight and appearance and says nasty things. And he actually made a very quick accusation about her brave statement about her cancer diagnosis. He was quick to jump on X and say that it was managed and akin to North Korean propaganda. Well, you'd know all about that, Christopher. Um, a woman, he said, who was aging as fast as a banana and claimed Prince William looked like a bald muppet. Now, I addressed that in a snarky snippet, so I'm not going to repeat my jokes about that. But if you want to check out that snarky snippet about Christopher Boozy and all he had to say, I'll link it in the description below. So it's all rather juvenile, junior high sort of stuff, isn't it? And it probably will never end. Now, I think the royal family will forever have to contend with the ramifications of Harry's betrayal. Um, I think that he will always have a footnote in their history. And I just can't wait for the day where he's relegated to an, you know, a, an old dusty book in the bottom of a bookcase, you know, irrelevant, no longer read. I can't wait for that day. But I think more work has to be done. And like I said, this work was started years ago by very brave people. And there is more behind this. And there is a bigger story behind this. And over the fullness of time, a lot will be revealed. And like I said too, there are also tangents to this story that could be other videos. And I have a rather interesting take on why I think Christopher Boozy might be hammering the fact that the videos of Catherine at the farm shop and also her bench 
uh, video wasn't authentic and that the wool was being pulled over the eyes of the UK people and people around the world. I think he has a reason to advocate for that and I'll share that in another video. Until then, I really look forward to reading what you have to say and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.